welcome to Not Just Books, the library's monthly show about what is happening in your world and the Williamson County Public Library. My name is Dolores Greenwald and I'm the director. Thank you for joining us. We are so happy that you are spending time with us today. In this episode, we have some special guests and wonderful announcements. So, you won't be disappointed. Are you and your kiddos into the latest Pokemon craze, Pokemon Go? This new app is everywhere. People are warning folks playing to be careful and be aware of your surroundings. If you're like me, I still have a lot to learn about this new phenomenon. So I asked children's librarian extraordinaire, Katie Searcy, to help me and you to understand all about chasing Pokemon monsters. In our What's Hot in Books segment, we're so happy to have local author Robert Hicks with us. His highly anticipated novel, The Orphan Mother, will be available in September, and you must put it on your fall read list. This is not just a book. It is a Williamson County event, and Mindy Tate, Executive Director of Franklin Tomorrow, will be here to discuss some upcoming programs focusing on this terrific book. Before we get started, I must pause and thank the viewers and library supporters of the Williamson County Library. Because of you, we reached our Make It a Million checkout goal last fiscal year. And because of you, we circulated 1,011,977 items. I am so thankful and appreciative of your support. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome back. In our What's Hot in Books segment, we have two very special guests with us today. Mindy Tate, Executive Director of Franklin Tomorrow, and local author and historian, someone I've been trying to get on the sh TV show for a while, Robert <laughs> Hicks. Welcome both of you. Thank you. Well, thank you. We are here today to talk about a Robert's new book and how it ties into some community events that Franklin Tomorrow is going to be doing. So, Mindy, I'll let you start. Why is this book important to the community, and why is Franklin Tomorrow getting involved? Well, I will let Robert talk about why this book is important to the community, and the book we're talking about is The Orphan Mother, which is coming out this fall, and we're so excited. This is his third book that really ties to the, of historical fiction that ties to the history of Franklin. Uh, Several years ago, Franklin Tomorrow worked with the City of Franklin and the library and a number of other organizations to conduct a community read. And we read a book from the list for the community read, and it was Dashiell Hammett's The Maltese Falcon. And it kind of made me wonder when we did that, why weren't we reading something that was written by one of the many talented authors that live here? Mm -hmm. And so the opportunity to partner with Robert and with Williams County Public Library and others this fall and into 2017 to conduct a kind of loosely organized but organized community read and series of discussions on the topic of the book is a great opportunity for Franklin Tomorrow to accomplish our mission which is to engage the community, foster collaboration, and then advocate for a shared vision for the future of Franklin. So Robert's got a busy release schedule, and he can talk a little bit about that too, <laughs> for the book which comes out in September. But he'll be our speaker on October 10th at our monthly lecture series called Frank Talks. And we're working out the details on that, but people can mark their calendars for October 10th and watch our website, franklintomorrow.org, to find out more about that particular event and then the upcoming events we'll be doing with the library and other organizations. This will spark a lot of conversation, I think, in the community, which is very exciting. So, Robert, thank you for joining us well, today. I'm honored to be here, and I had no idea anyone had ever wanted me on this show. But <laughs> now that I know, that I guess know. I'll be here every week. <laughs> well, tell us 
about the orphan mother, a novel? Well, you know, uh, my first book, uh, my first novel was a book called uh, The Widow of the South, and in that book um, there you know, was a story of, of, of this family and of a community caught up in the middle of, of the Battle of Franklin and in the aftermath. At the end of that book, in my author's notes, I said that I, I found the most interesting person, the most complete person in the story was um, a, uh, an enslaved woman named Mariah Reddick. And, uh, and so even though I went with my second book to New Orleans, uh, it dealt again with the, the effects of the Battle of Franklin on people's lives. And as I wanted to come back to Franklin, and I started thinking about what I wanted to talk about, then I, I thought, you know what, I'd like to, I'd like to somehow step into um, Reconstruction and what Franklin was like afterwards. Because, I mean, it, 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 while the battle only lasted five hours, in reality, uh, Reconstruction went on for, for years. Also, Tennessee has a really interesting Reconstruction. First of all, this book takes place right before before real Reconstruction starts. For about two years after the war, there, there wasn't Reconstruction anywhere. It was a kind of a, a period where everything was in limbo. Uh, President Johnson was, was pretty much setting the rules and laying the perimeters. And so the military is just coming in now to take over. And, uh, and, and so that's the story. I, I felt that, that we, we really don't know the story. I mean, we all have these kind of uh, uh, simplistic ideas of, you know, you know, the Civil War ends and then there's like this terrible reconstruction and then we finally uh, get our areas back to self-determination. But in reality, it's, 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 it's really much more complicated. So that's what this story is. It begins with a murder. It begins with the murder of, uh, of this woman's son, and the book will be her trying to find an answer, um, far more than, uh, than, let's say, wanting revenge. In fact, I think it'll be clear after a while that she does, does not seek revenge. She simply wants several things. She wants to believe his life mattered. She wants to know why he died. And she wants something else that most of us want. She wants to be heard. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so that's, that's really the story of, of, of how she tries to, to uh, find resolution in all these things. So, Robert, tell us when the book is going to be available and how we're going to be able to receive copies, some of the book launchings that's okay. going on here. Okay, so... So for Franklin, the, the book comes out on September 13th, but for Franklin, um, one of the launches, which we've already set up, is, is going to be on September 15th, which is Thursday night on September, um, and it will be at the Franklin Theater, and it will be a benefit for uh, student scholarships at, at New Hope Academy here in Franklin. Um, part of the story of the book is her trying to help uh, children um, uh, be educated. And so we kind of thought it would be a, um, a, a great connection to make for it. Um, that, that will be uh, uh, $130, and with that you'll get a copy of the book. And, uh, and uh, I think that's going to be an exciting time. Other than that, you can pre-order it now, either at, obviously, our local bookstore here, Landmark Books, or you can pre-order it online at Amazon and barnesandnoble.com, um, or at a bookstore near you. Um, uh, hopefully, hopefully people will go ahead and pre-order copies of the book, because I, 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 th I think this is going to turn out to be a kind of an exciting thing. I and, think so too. And we will have copies of the book available on October 10th oh. when uh, Robert is part of our Frank Talks lectures. We work out the final details, but we'll be working with landmark booksellers to, to get those books there. Um, you know, this, as I mentioned, is the third in his series, in a, in a series of historic fiction, all of which <coughs> had really, um, particularly Widow of the South, have had a dramatic impact on Franklin, and I think this book 
has the potential to really create conversation in our community at a time when, when that's something that needs to occur. Uh, Robert has got some very relevant themes to us today that's right, in the book. Hopefully. And uh, I think that is one of the, that's one of the things that I liked about it as I read it is that how prevalent some of these issues are to us today. You know, as much as it was to them during the time the book was set. I have always wanted to ask an author this question. When you, and I think it's different answers to this, but when you are developing a story, do you see it from beginning to end or do you see it as it develops? How you does know, it come to you? <clears throat> for me, now you have to remember, I was in the music business. I have never taken a creative writing course. Now I teach them. <laughs> so, uh, but, so it's, it's, you know, earn while you learn is, <laughs> has been my motto. So the truth is um, I followed basically Mrs. Albert, Miss Alberta Johnson's sixth grade uh, class on, on composition. And, uh, and I put out, I made an outline. Mm -hmm. And so I did build the whole story for The Wood of the South. I continue to do that. Now this is what happens. I'd be very dishonest if I left you there. Along the writing process, I diverge, just like I do any time when I'm talking to anyone. I, I move off and I'm in other areas and I have to co constantly be uh, reworking the outline. But I mean, that's a very good question because, you know, for me, I do start out with a, a, a complete story, but the story of the orphan mother is, is very different from mm -hmm. my original outline because eventually um, uh, things happen that kind of lead me to move in a different direction. Well, thank you both, Robert and Mindy, for being with us today. And we will have to have you back so that we can have more discussions and bring out some community events as well. Well, we're excited about it. I think it'll be great to work with the library because we, you've been such a generous community partner and we are excited about doing that, but we want everybody to mark their calendar for October 10th. Thank you, and thank you both. Thank and we'll you. be right back. Did you know the library offers one-on-one -on -one computer sessions? Sessions may be scheduled by appointment with a member of the reference staff. Call or stop by the reference desk to schedule a 30-minute session. Computer assistance is customized to answer a specific question. You can call the reference department at 615-595-1243 for more information or to schedule a session. Welcome back. In our Save the Date segment, we have children's librarian extraordinaire, Katie Searcy, here today. And we are going to be talking about the rave that has hit the country talking about Pokemon Go. And why is it relevant to the library? Well, lots of different reasons. But we're gonna talk about that with Katie. Hi, Katie, Hi. how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? We are good today. Now, tell me about Pokemon. Well, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a game that's basically created, was basically created to get players out and moving and out and, and out and exploring their neighborhoods and their cities. Um, See, I thought Pokemon was like a long time ago and it was gone and now you hear it all the time. Oh no, oh no. This it's been around like for a, about 20 years. This is like a 2.0 Pokemon. Oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I kind of like to compare the game to almost um, a, ge a digital geocaching, but you're not actually finding a physical object. You're finding a virtual Pokemon. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically about what it is. Um, and you, you go and you track Pokemon using this app on your phone, using your smartphone. And you download, you download the app, mm -hmm. whether you have an iPhone or an Android. Mm -hmm. And then you install the, pro, install the app and then what happens? Well, mine almost crashed when I downloaded mine. Yeah, it's, 
Well, it's such a popular game. They've been having issues. Um, they're lots. Of, they're still working out all the kinks. It's it hasn't been around for quite enough time for them to iron everything out yet. But um, yeah, once less you, than a month, right? Yeah, yeah, oh my gosh. yeah. <laughs> but once you come across a Pokemon, your phone will vibrate, and um, then you'll be prompted to catch it. And once you once you pull it up on your phone, it pulls up. Um, it uses your your camera to use augmented reality, and so it looks like the Pokemon is actually there in the room with you. Um, it's super neat. It kind of catches you off guard at but first. You, but you but does the Pokemon appear at a distance, and then you have to go to the po? How does that work? How does the Geo part work well. It runs off your phone's GPS, and um, so it depends on like where where you go. There are certain Pokemon that that spawn in certain areas, and so you have to go and track them down. Now, right now, the the tracking is is kind of buggy, um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's not working as well as it should right now. But you're supposed. To, but usually, there's um, there are Pokemon that show up in this little this little nearby box mm -hmm. on your screen, and you. Um, you just you go and you can figure out where which, which direction you have to go and because you have to get a certain amount of distance yes, to it before yes. you can catch it mm -hmm. right yeah oh my gosh yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's a great way to get get people out and, people and moving out and moving <laughs> now I uh, when I've experimented with it just a little bit and it will bring up other locations like when I was in the library working with it it took me to a historical sign mm -hmm. somewhere else so what does that mean exactly that then if I go there there will be a Pokemon there too or how well, does that work? Not necessarily um, the, the little geographical locations that you're talking about are called Poke Stops okay. um, and so that's where you go and you can get supplies like Pokeballs you can get eggs that hatch Pokemon after you've walked a certain distance, you can get um, things like revive and like potions that you use after battling, um, just little things like that. It's where you get supplies, but you have to you have to be right up on those to get the supplies, and you just swipe across the the little little image and and you'll get you'll get your supplies. So we have levels. There's levels to it. Yes. So the more supplies you get. The more levels that you go up, is that how it works, or not really? Okay. You get the more Pokemon you catch, the more um, the more experience points you get, and then ah. you, you also get experience points through going to the stops and through battling other players at gyms, and then you can level up. Now you can't go to a gym once you reach level five, and I because you won't even you'll get killed. Yeah, you will, <laughs> you will, <laughs> and you'll still probably get killed once you once you get. To level five, I'm I'm not nearly ready for, uh, ready for for battling yet. And I'm I'm at level fourteen. So, <laughs> but we um the library is a pokey stop. Yes, and we have talked about becoming a gym, but um, libraries or I look at it this way: we're kind of helping parents assist in getting their kids up and moving. Oh yeah. And um, so parents should like this game as well, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. And especially at the library, we're in a really great location. We're in such a historic part of town with all the battlefields and the Carter House and everything right down the street um, that you can easily park at the library and then just go walk around and go, go to all the stops. And there's a, there's a gym down the street, even though we're not a gym, but now there's one down the, the street. where's the gym at? It's at the Carter House. Oh, the Carter House mm -hmm. is a gym. Okay. Mm -hmm. I wonder who there has a gym. <laughs> Set it up for a gym. That's funny. But um, so it is really, it's really catching on. Kids will be... You think they'll ban it from schools? Will kids be able to do this at school? I can I see know. them confiscating all these yeah. telephones from from mobile phones yeah. from kids. But um, are libraries having programs around this? Oh yes, there have been lots of different. I've I've seen where libraries are doing everything from displays to pokey walks throughout throughout town, and they they would kind of go through and with, oh, a pokey with kids walk. and their families. I like that yeah, idea. yeah. And they they go idea. through and you know they would talk about safety things, but also talk about Pokemon Go and just it, it just it sounds sound, sounds really neat. So that's that's interesting. Yeah. Stay tuned. We may be doing that yeah. too. <laughs> um, so it is a great way to 
engage your family and is there any kind of apps that's it maybe a GPS app that's like this is it very seems to be very unique well, there's there's another there's another game that's similar to it from the same company called Ingress. That's where actually ah. a lot of the locations in Pokemon Go came from. Um, ah. So if you're interested in Pokemon Go, but maybe not the, the glitches, <laughs> the crazy part, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that might be a good a good alternative. I, I I haven't played it, but it's it's it seems pretty similar. So this is kind of a forerunner to it, to mm -hmm. yeah. So is there any talk about what they're going to do now? Any phase to nin that Nintendo or who is it that does this? Um, Niantic. Niantic. So it would be, I guess they'll be doing more stuff like this, I would think. I hope so. Um, I know that they're they're planning on launching um, for like future other generations of, of Pokemon in the future so that it's not just a certain, a certain um, amount that you can catch so that they can... Um, so players can, I don't know, I guess, catch more, even more than, than what there is now. And then I know they're also wanting to start uh, player trading. So if you've, if you've got a, really strong, a couple of really strong Pokemon that your friends don't have, you can trade with your friends. I know I'm really excited for that. <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, you can build your strength if mm -hmm. your friend will share your... Mm -hmm. Ah, interesting. Yeah. So they, the more... What did you call them? The more that they catch, the more items that they get, mm -hmm. the stronger they become. Yes. So then you can share that. Well, I, I, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what that, what all the trading is going to involve. I know it's going to, to, tr um, for Pokemon. Okay. Pokemon. I think, I think probably, probably supplies as well. So. <laughs> so it's kind of a combination of a GPS and an adventure game. Mm -hmm. It sounds. It like. is. It is. It's also basically a, a fitness game if you think about <laughs> it. <laughs> well, yeah, it keeps you it keeps you moving. Yeah. Unless you you know you but kids need to be careful about cars and walking into things when oh, they're yeah. looking at their phones. Yeah. <laughs> I've been seeing that on the news too. Yeah. Just just use your common sense and and you'll be fine. <laughs> Pay attention. Use your common sense. <laughs> well, we have. Um, a lot of other things going on. We're going to be starting back from the summer with our uh, story times again. Yes. And so you can go to our website and find out about that. Uh, and you're doing the baby, are you, are you the one that's still doing the baby story yes, times? Yes, I am. It's a lot of fun. We have so much fun. You've had good crowds this summer. Oh, yeah. We Tell had me a little bit about that. <laughs> we had 105 a couple of weeks ago, that, <laughs> now, now that's parents and babies, uh -huh. but still, that's a quite a crowd for for the room that we have that in. And <laughs> we, we we do a parachute and do the, the egg shakers, and so it was getting everybody around the parachute was a little crowded and <laughs> didn't work quite so well. But <laughs> it ended up so fine. So how do you use the parachute? Well, we um we ha we ha I have everybody get in a circle, and the babies are either in the parents' lap or some parents like to put put the baby on the floor and some mm -hmm. babies of course like to crawl under it and we just we lift it and lower it we sing the itsy bitsy spider in english and in spanish oh how fun and then we sing um, another song about colors so well we'll have to we'll have to video that sometime. yeah <laughs> that sounds like fun we did our first live streaming event not mm -hmm. too long ago that would be fun to live stream, at least that part of it. Oh, yeah, you know, that yeah. That <laughs> would be good. Yeah. Now, um, I know we are kind of, we've are we winding down from the summer. We've got our story times coming back. Um, what, else do you, what else is in the planning? Well, we're also going to be starting back our Lego Club in September, I think. We're also starting back our chess club. And we've got some, some tween programming in the works. Yay. Not entirely sure what or when but <laughs> <laughs> it will definitely be coming oh tell the viewers about your candy land program. oh the life-size candy awesome. land yeah. yeah well we um i set up our story theater and i say i i and and uh, our other children's librarians set up set up our our story theater as a, a giant candy land board basically and um we made all sorts of big big life-size props big lollipops mm -hmm. we made um a big giant licorice tree and 
it was it was it was so much fun. The kids the kids loved it. <laughs> A lot of work went into that program oh, because yes. it was it was making all the different items for Candyland. So we need to do that. We need to do that again. Oh, definitely. So. <laughs> I think that that's that's in the works too. <laughs> so on our website, which is wcpltn.org, we have all kind of readers advisory things. Tell us a little bit about that for the parents watching. Well, if you go to our children's website, you um. We have, we have the current VSBA book list, and I think we've still got the one from last year on there as well. And then we also have books, book lists that we, we made up um, that just are just books that we recommend for certain age groups for you know kids interested in dinosaurs, interested in things that go. We have a Barbie book list and things like that. So what are some of the, what are some of the popular books out there now that kids were reading over this summer? Ooh, let's see. The Land of Stories was very popular, um, and of course Harry Potter. There yeah. was there was one week when there were just there were no Harry Potter books on the shelf at all. <laughs> Everything had to be put on hold. I guess they were getting ready for the new one, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and I know uh, the Star Wars books. Oh yes, are can't keep those on the shelf. <laughs> we have different kinds too. We have the the chapter books, mm -hmm. and then we have the the DK books mm -hmm. where it explains some of the characters and what have you. Yeah. So we have various kind of We do. We even Star have Wars board books, books for, for the little ones who are oh interested but not quite not quite old <laughs> enough and ready for the <laughs> the big Star Wars books. Oh my gosh. So but it's very uh, the children's staff does a very excellent job in putting together uh, books as well as events that kids will like and if parents have not brought their kids they're missing a treasure we oh, yes. in the community appreciate all the things that you guys do for the kiddos and in early literacy is so important so it is it's it good. is and if you use Pokemon or Candyland that's even better to bring the kids in <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining us well, thank today. thank you for having me. And we'll be right back. Thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate the opportunity to share with you the goings-on in the library and the Williamson County community. Also, a very, very special thank you to our guest today, Katie Searcy, Children's Librarian, Mindy Tate, Executive Director, Franklin Tomorrow. Last but certainly not least, author Robert Hicks. Please remember, you can give us your comments by sending an email to notjustbooks at williamson-tn.org or leave comments and suggestions on our website at wcpltn.org. You can also let us know what you think about our new website. Also, read our blog and tell us what you think. Your amazing library staff writes some terrific articles, so don't miss it. You can always leave comments on our Facebook page at WCPLTN or Twitter at WCPLTN. We do want to hear from you about your Williamson County Library. Take a second and let us know how we're doing. Until next time, explore your world and read. <laughs>